You are now tuned in to Dusty Vision Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Duke of Earl. That's right, I'm uh, excited about tonight's show. Uh, Victory Outreach is a church that I'm very familiar with. My stepfather went there after turning his life around, after gang banging, living that crazy life. And what I really like and appreciate about this church is they have a special niche. Okay. I know I know me talking about church. You know, it's 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 throwing you off a little bit, Dre. But it's just okay. hang in with me. I'm there. Uh, this 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 church specifically, uh, I guess, targets or, or goes after people like my stepfather, the veteranos, the. The, uh, the, the gangbangers, um, the people whose society don't uh, necessarily approach. these uh, th- This group approaches them, and that's what I find different about them. And I have a whole history myself with them, and we're going to get into that. But on the line, I have someone very special joining us, Pastor Vince Molina from Victory yes, Outreach. Sir. How are you, man? Yes, sir. I'm doing good, man. I just uh, got home a while ago and just looking forward. Uh, excited about about the interview and just to, you know yeah. chop it up a little bit yeah Looking man forward yeah. To it. well let's uh let's get right into <laughs> it let's get right into it yeah uh, tell me about from your knowledge tell me about the history of victory outreach well it all goes back to new york city my my our founder pastor sonny arbenzoni uh, was reached by david wilkerson um which you know re- reaching into the new york city streets uh our founder pastor sonny was a drug addict uh running the streets and all that and uh, David Wilkerson had ministered and, and, and reached a gang member by the name of Nikki Cruz, uh, part of the Mau Mau group, uh, Mau Mau gang there in New York, treacherous gang members back in the, I believe, late 50s, early early 60s. They were in and the, uh, Nikki Cruz. They, the cross and the, uh, there was a famous The book. cross and the switch there you absolutely. Go. Cool, cool. The go, cross and the yeah. switch Go for it. Keep historical going. book. Yeah, historical book. And uh, through, you know, so through David Wilkerson reaching uh, Nikki Cruz, then them reaching Pastor Sonny Argonzoni, uh, you know, they reached him. He's a drug addict. He got got miraculously saved, delivered from heroin addiction. And uh, it was really Nikki Cruz that really went out above and beyond. Uh, even when Pastor Sonny was going through a real struggle uh, in his salvation, it was Nikki Cruz that went looking for him again to, to make sure that he was okay. He was he was coming to a, a crossroads, serving God, but really feeling the pressure of making that decision to really serve Christ. And then it was Nikki Cruz that, that sought him out, looked for him, and found him again and said, look, it, no matter how hard it gets, you know, you, you got to get back up. And just it was, it was a life-changing moment. And if it wasn't for Nikki Cruz uh, uh, going after Pastor Sonny during his struggle of salvation, uh, I, I don't know where we would be, a lot of us would be, but uh, thank God for men that were obedient to to reach the lost and those that are hurting and those that even struggle sometimes coming out of that lifestyle. And that was what Nikki Cruz did. He, he, he really reached out and, and, and reached out to uh, Pastor Sonny. And from there, Pastor Sonny was, uh, was, uh, went to L.A. And, and went to Bible College out there, La Puente Bible College, L.A.B.I. And from there on, um, he stayed out there. He, he met his, his wife, Sister Julie. And uh, they made, uh, you know, the West Coast their home. And that's where Victor Evans was, was started right there in Aliso Village in East L.A. I believe it's still there, the, uh, the projects. And started right there by reaching the gang members, the drug addict, the prostitute, the down and out, the hurting. And that all started in 1967. So here we are well over 50 years later uh, still doing it. And it's just growing and growing. The ministry's growing. I'm just a, a one, one small church part of a great, great body uh, all over the world that's reaching to the streets. I love that. Let's let's go way back to the beginning, and and then we'll end at how you ended sure. up here. Uh, but where exactly did you grow up? Well, I grew up in San Jose, California. Well, I, I grew up in in Santa Barbara and San Jose. My family is originally from the Santa Barbara area. My mom and dad are originally from Santa Barbara. Uh, my dad was born in Carpinteria. My mom was born in Santa Barbara. So, uh, you know, they they my dad migrated, uh, if I could use that word, up to Northern California uh, in the in the 40s, I believe, and uh, late 40s, and, and, and ended up over there. Uh, of course, my mom ended up over there too. They met. It was a kind of a crazy story, but they had, kind of reunited up there. Uh, uh, both our families knew each other from Santa Barbara, but my mom and dad met again in, in San Jose, got married, 
Um, my dad was a professional fighter, top 10 in the world. Oh, yeah? uh, so his career was he really launched out. He was really busy fighting at Madison Square Garden. Wait, New what, York City, what, what's years. his name? I'm a, I'm a huge boxing fan. His name is Louis, Louis Molina. You can Google him, wow. look him up, okay. his record. He was, he was in the Olympics in, in, in Australia in 1957, I think, mm. 56, 57. And so he had a, a long career of, of boxing, professional fighter. Oh, okay. And, of course, uh, married my mom, began to have some kids uh, with total uh, five kids, five siblings. But in 1974, 74, 75, we went back to Santa Barbara. And that's where we found ourselves, me and my brothers, getting involved in a lot of things at a young age. Uh, my brother was a heroin addict. Uh, my other brother uh, just running the streets. Uh, you know, we, and eventually I, I found myself trying to identify with my brothers at a young age of 11 and a half, 12 years old. Just began to, to search for, you know, uh, you know, excitement, fun, um, acceptance. So I began to run the streets too. But Santa Barbara is very, as you know, is a very nice area. Yeah. But back in the 70s, it, it had, even right now, it has some rough areas, some really, really rough areas. But um, so, you know, we kind of we grew up there for a while. Then uh, 1980 or so, we moved back to San Jose. So we kind of moved back and forth and uprooted ourselves. And it was there when we moved back to San Jose, California, is where I eventually gave my heart to the Lord. I got introduced to Victor Outreach. Uh, my pastor, Pastor Ed Morales, the, the director the, of uh, the director that uh, directed the movie, The Duke of Earl, that, that was my pastor. And I, I met him at a very young age, and uh, he's the one that reached us, he reached me and my brothers, and uh, the rest is history. Although I pulled out of it and I, I got saved, all the dudes that I, run, I ran around with, are, and, and I know you hear this a lot, they're either dead, dead or locked up. Ugh. That's how it is. And, and some are doing well. There is actually a few of us from my neighborhood right there on the east side of Santa Barbara. Mm. East side Santa Ruta, they called it. You know, we, we ran around there. And some are doing well, and some are dead. Mm. A lot of good friends that died, overdosed, or were killed. And uh, and then there's some of us that got saved and, 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 and are serving the Lord and, and doing well. And so we kind of like, like, me and my brothers made it out of the neighborhood there in the east side of Santa Barbara and, and San Jose. We ran around San Jose, too. And that was kind of a hard thing because moving from... Southern to Northern uh, California, you know, back then in the North and South thing was jumping off a whole lot. Mm -hmm. It was there, but it, the it was, it was difficult. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that whole thing was really, it was starting. I mean, I'm sure it was already happening in the prisons, but mm -hmm. in the streets in San Jose, it wasn't jumping off that much. And then, and then as, as we moved back to San Jose, we started, you know, uh, seeing a lot of that jumping off and happening. And it was, it was kind of hard because we had lived in both Southern and Northern California mm -hmm. throughout our lives, you know. A lot of my family have, I have family in Long Beach, LA, you know, Lakewood, you know. So I have family in, in Northern and Southern California, and I've always been back and forth, kind of, you know. Okay. And so it's been at times difficult, you know. I want to talk about, I guess this will be one of the biggest parts of your legacy, you know. Um, the Duke of Earl. Uh, is a right, a, right. A, gr a great movie that a lot of people who grew up in Los Angeles and uh, shit, California, everywhere, Texas. I mean, everybody knows about this movie. Right. And uh, Vince and I discussed uh, a few days ago or a couple weeks ago whenever we first talked. I don't remember if I saw the right. movie first or the play first. But uh, long story short, Victory Outreach put together a, uh, a play that is still going on to this day, I, I do believe. And they basically picked real life street kids to, to act. And I'm gonna right. take, uh, I'm gonna have you take it from there and explain okay. the history of Duke of Earl and how you got approached to do the movie, to be Cisco. Right, yeah, right, right. I played the character Cisco. Uh, my wife is Shy Girl, she plays Shy Girl in the, in the movie. Mm -hmm. And you're talking almost 40 years of, of Duke of Earl history that I have, and I'm gonna try to sum it up the best I can. I'm an original member, if you call it, of the play, the movie, starting from the very beginning, 1980, 81, at a young age when I got saved uh, and gave my heart to the Lord. You know, my pastor, Pastor Ed Morales, uh, I remember, I, I remember the day he told us, listen, we're going to we're going to go into the youth authorities and we're going to show a play. And we were all looking at him like, what kind of play? He goes, it's going to be a gang play about gang members. And we were freshly saved off the streets. We were still struggling with different things. But he gave us um, an identity to, and something to, that we could get involved in, something that we could um, 
pour our hearts into you. It gave us something like when, you, when you're a young person, you leave a certain lifestyle, there has to be a replacement of something else. And, and that's exactly what happened. So, uh, you know, all of us coming off the streets, running the streets, and then get, and coming and giving our hearts to the Lord, there had to be a replacement. There had to be something that we could pour ourselves into. And so what he told us, he said, listen, in about two weeks, I, now I can't remember the youth authority, which one it was. It, we, it was either Carl Holton or OH Close. Uh, those are in Stockton area. Those are the, the youth authorities. I can't remember which one it was. But he said, we're going to go in two weeks to go do a play. And we looked at him like, what play are we talking about? We had, he goes, we're going to put together a play about two gang men, two gangs. And there's going to be this, and it's going to be that. And we're going to, and he started talking to us about the play. And we're like, we, we've never done anything like that, anything. And so he said, next Saturday, meet me at my house in the backyard. And we're going to have practice. And we're going to, we're going to go through the play. So we, we all were excited because we are all from the streets. We're all already dressed up, you know dressed like gang members and khakis and Pendletons and hair nets and you know, the Stacey Adams and just, you know, and so we were like, in the oldies, he had the music. He said, okay, this is the story. So he put together this play and we had no idea, no idea that it would blow up to what it was, what it, what it became. So two weeks later, we went into the Youth Authority in Stockton, which was, like I said, either O.H. Close or Carl Holton, those are the two names. And DeWitt Nelson, I think, was the other one. And we went in there, and we and all these dudes, man, Sureños, Norteños, all gang members, filled this little auditorium in this youth authority. And here we came, here we come. We came out on stage, the music was on, the, you know, we began to just do our parts, and the gospel was preached through this play. And, uh, it, it, it was it was an incredible an incredible evening. I'll tell you why, because little did we know that as we were doing this play, we thought at that time we were just entertaining. We had no idea that we were ministering. Really, it was, oh, okay. it was more like we thought we were like because we were fresh. And when I watched it, if I may, when I watched it, I didn't feel like I was uh -huh. being preached to. So we're doing the play, and to see the faces of these guys that were locked up. To see them come to the altar at the end, because at the end, if, if you're familiar with it, there's an altar call to give your heart That's to right. Jesus. Yeah, I do remember that. Now and that when, you say that. yeah, and when we saw all these gang members, hardcore, you're talking 16, 17 year old young guys that are in there for murder, mm -hmm. that are in there for all kinds of crazy things. To see them at the altar, broken and crying and giving their hearts to, to the Lord, we never expected that. We didn't know. Now my pastor did. He knew exactly what he was doing and how he was going to do it. But we we had no idea. But when we began to see these gang members broken and giving their hearts to the Lord, there was a special anointing that fell upon that altar call, that it was the birth of something great. And when we were done, we were like in amazement. We were speechless because we didn't we could not believe that the little that the little that we did on the stage, which was probably an hour uh, it, uh, the drama lasted about an hour and none of us are actors. We're all just from the streets to see that how God used our lives to touch the lives of these gang members. And from then on the, 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 the director of the youth authority said, come, could, can you come back again? And we went back again, but from then on it blew up. My pastor saw that this play was touching the lives of gang members, of drug addicts, people from the streets. So what he said, what he told us was, look at now what this is what we're going to do. We're going to show it on the east side of San Jose. We're going to show it on the west side, the north side and the south side. We're going to do the plate all over San Jose. We're going to do it. We're going to do it every side of San Jose. We're going to invite every gang, every gang member, every every person from the streets. And mm. so we began to do the play all over San Jose. From there, it blew up into even more. We're all of a sudden we're in Southern California. We're in Northern California. We're in Chicago. We're in Hawaii. As, as time went on, it began to grow and grow, and, and then it, it went from part from Duke of Earl one to Duke of Earl two. That was the second part of the Duke of Earl. So you, so we were doing the play, the drama for a, a, a couple of about three or four years, mm -hmm. and then we had an opportunity uh, for my pastor to film it into a movie because yeah. it was just a drama on the stage, and then TBN Trinity Broadcasting Networks, Jan and Paul Crouch. Uh, they were the they're the ones that sponsored the movie, 
and they're the ones that provided pretty much the finances and the filming, the video, and and we recorded the Duke of World play into a movie, and that movie was was filmed in East LA in Garrity, it was filmed in White Fence, it was filmed on it was filmed on Soto in Brooklyn, and then it was also filmed in San Jose and on the on the East Side, it was filmed at Hammer and Lewis, which is a real popular clothing store. Um, different parts. We, we we filmed in Northern and Southern California. Actually, I remember when we filmed, we went into Garrity Lomas and we went into the neighborhood to film. We literally had to ask permission from the veteranos to go in there. And we they, they literally had a meeting. And so wow. we yeah. went on the top of the hill there. It was a rough, it was a rough neighborhood. I remember uh, we went in, we went on the top of the hill up there. We, we started filming and those guys stayed, those guys stayed up all night watching us. All, almost 24 hours of filming and and they, they took shifts some guys would leave and the other guys would come but they watched us the whole time that we didn't disrespect the neighborhood uh -huh. right on the walls or do anything but it was really organized mm -hmm. and we had to ask for, for permission to go into the different neighborhoods uh -huh. to film even white fence mm, that makes a lot of sense um, okay. so I have a specific question for you about about the uh, yeah. the play and when you guys were, you know, promoting the movie and whatnot, going into these neighborhoods, right. did you guys have any, do you remember anything standing out where you had a specific issue where there were gunfights or a random drive-by? Not necessarily yeah. toward yeah. you, but just in the neighborhood? Yes, all the time. Not all the time, but it, it happened, to be honest. I, I remember in Santa Monica, we did it in Santa Monica, they did a drive-by at the theater or wherever place we were doing it. You could hear the gunshots, you know. They, nobody got hit, but the, you did hear the gunshots. Um, numerous times, but you would think um, you would you would hear a lot more, but there really wasn't. There was we had a lot of favor and a lot of respect. There was, and it's still on video if you're able to find it. We did it in uh, the Duke of World Two, which is the part two of Duke of World One. Mm -hmm. We did it at East LA College. Over fourteen thousand uh, gang members there, and there turned into a melee, what? a big big gang fight, and it's on video. You could. It's kind of hard to find, but he could find it, and it was, it was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. And uh, both sides went at it, but we had good security. They were able to break it up, but but it was still it was it was it was it was a melee for a good ten about ten minutes until they got, uh, you know, the crowd under control. But we've had a few situations. Nobody's ever died, just roughed up, hurt, beat up. But nobody's ever lost their lives in any of our performances. But we've had some squabbles. We've had some things that that have happened. But the amazing thing is to see those people that that maybe got beat up or jumped, or they, to see them come and give their lives to the Lord at the end. They <laughs> stuck around even for the rest of the play. You know, so it's been, it's kind of it was good. I love that man. It's, it's yeah. It's been a pleasure, uh, Vince. Can you, do you would you like yes. to promote anything? Um, you, that the floor is yours. Well, you know, we just want to let anybody know that's listening out there, if you're caught up in that web of gang violence, drug act, drug activity, hooked, bound, man, there's a God that loves you so very much, and he's still changing lives. He, he's still changing the gang members and the, those that are out there that are hurting and lost. We're not the only ministry, the only church that's reaching out. You know, there's great, great ministries out there, but we are Victory Outreach, and, and, and we are, we've been around for well over 50 years. We're still doing it. We have never lost our emphasis. And reaching the hurting and the lost throughout the years regardless of the ministry has grown worldwide our emphasis is always the treasures out of darkness isaiah 45 2 and 3 that god said i would give you the treasures out of darkness and those gang members those men those men and women that are on the streets and lost and hurting if there was no direction there's there's a there's a, a new life that god is able to give you and and, and 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 through the gospel of jesus christ and i thank god that over 40 years later i'm still saved Still serving the Lord. I pastor a church here in Austin, Texas. I left California 22 years ago. I now pastor a Victory Outreach Church here in the city of Austin, and God is doing great things in our city, and God is doing great things in our ministry of Victory Outreach. I thank God for our founders, Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie, my pastor, Pastor Ed and Mitzi Morales. My pastor has gone on to be with the Lord now, but he's left a tremendous legacy, and I'm so very proud to be part of that. Amen to that. Pastor Vince Molina, it's truly yes. been a pleasure, and I look forward to staying close in touch with you. Absolutely, Arnold. God bless you, my brother. You too, my friend. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. All right, bye -bye. peace, man.